Hey guys, just a quick video of one of these screen mirroring mini displays. It's basically like a pop-on or MagSafe pop-on monitor you can add to your iPhone, which will just basically yeah, magnetize onto it. And it's like 25 euros on AliExpress. This is just bought to check it out. And you basically just turn it on. It will boot and then it will yeah, just uh, advertise a screen sharing uh, device which you can basically just connect with any compatible device to like Android and Apple etc. And after that you just basically have a copy of the yeah of your screen. And that's mostly used to have it like on the back side and then can take selfies with it. But yeah, enough of that. What we are here for is to turn it uh, upside down and take a look inside or tear it down. Uh, we also get in this one like a, what is it, a Bluetooth remote. We can also take a look inside. These are mostly like eight pin chips here. And I'm just wondering what chip is inside and if it can have any custom firmware and it's quite a nice screen just out of curiosity and yeah so in the remote this will be most likely just put together that way and we can have a closer look onto this okay so I see one three eight six s that's something i have to google it's a new one uh, but you can see the ice pin uh, i have seen this once in a remote already so yeah i mean it's just uh, together with it in the box and not really needed at all what is interesting is the device itself um, it's charged via USB-C and it must be open to the front somehow and I hope I don't break it now. I have extra long fingernails to get better under it. To open it up I will use just like one of these um, clips and try to pry it to the front. Since I have not done it here it's really like risky. And it does not seem to clip somehow, so it seems to really be like glued. Yeah, I can hear the glue losing up a bit. So I will try to go around with it. So most likely just the screen will come apart and the PCB will be still on the back of the device so I have to be careful not to damage any ribbon cable I guess so yeah, here you can see it a bit better so it's like you have this screen this is the silver part and then you have the front glass and we need to get between the front glass and the case without damaging the screen itself and that's really where the long fingernails help. Like you can see how far we, we are here already. Yeah, that looks good. And I can see a bit inside. So here I can see the flex cable. So I will start or go further here on the top to not damage the flex cable. And Fingers crossed, nothing will be damaged on the last centimeters. So I'm just going around like so. And yeah, okay. As it seems, the display was yeah separated from the PCB already. And let's hope nothing got damaged while doing so. Okay, so let's remove a bit of the glue 
so it's not so sticky anymore. And before doing anything else, let's just reconnect it and see if it still works. As this would change a lot of energy into it. Uh, yeah, that looks nice. Okay, perfect. So we still have the fully working device, the PCB in the back and the battery. It's 1500 milliampere hour. So we can turn it off again. And what can we see here already? We have like a SPI flash, three buttons, which is like the brightness, rotation and maybe like size. A bit of power regulators and let's um, get a screwdriver and also take a look under the PCB because there must be the main SOC. And it is just two screws and then I guess the USB-C plug holds it in more. Uh, we also have the Wi-Fi antenna here on the side. And what I'm missing is really like the... Um, I thought it would have the MagSafe including the QI charging, but it is just that, as it seems. Okay, but the interesting part. Let's zoom a bit in. So we have a Realtek Wi-Fi chip. We have the HC Semi C3100. I need to look that up as well. Then we have the uh, RAM, I would say. And yeah, the FPI flash on the other side. That's quite interesting. So there must be really like a full OS running, most likely Linux of some kind. Let's take a look at the RX and TX pins. And of course, dump out the memory. Let's see if we find out more in this video. So after yeah, dumping the external SPI flash and taking a look uh, in the internet about the chip inside of this screen mirror thingy, it turns out the chip used is very similar to the one in the SF2000 gaming console. It's basically like an emulator for like 20 euros chipped. And um, by comparing them, it really shows that this is somewhat overpriced for what it has. It's quite uh, limited. You have um, just three, three buttons, the Wi-Fi and the display. And on the F SF2000 uh, device, you have like a joystick and further. And there's also an SDK for the SF2000, which might also run on this uh, chip used inside. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it was nice to look inside, find out how it works, and yeah, it's interesting how good it works, how fast it really is, and yeah, have a great day.